Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I would like to talk about the subject entitled Standards in Diagnostic Endoscopy for Gastric Neoplasia. Introducing guidelines for endoscopic diagnosis of early gastric cancer on behalf of the Japanese Gastroenterological Endoscopy Society. Basic principles are necessary to ensure the safe and accurate implementation of the endoscopic diagnosis of early gastric cancer. Although guidelines for the endoscopic treatment of gastric cancer have been published to date, no guidelines specialized for endoscopic diagnosis of early gastric cancer have been developed. In this background, the JGES guideline committee decided to newly develop a guideline for the endoscopic diagnosis of early gastric cancer based on scientific findings. The English version of this guideline has been just launched in July this year. This clinical practice guideline consists of the following sections to provide the current guideline according to the order of the clinical practice. First, we need to do risk stratification of gastric cancer before endoscopic examination. One of the statements is a combination of serum H. pylori antibody and serum pepsinogen may be useful for the risk stratification of gastric cancer. Measurement of serum H. pylori antibody titer is simple and proven useful for the risk stratification of gastric cancer. And serum PG level is also proven useful for screening of risk of gastric cancer. So-called ABC screening, by which subjects are divided into four groups according to measurement of serum H. pylori antibody titer and serum pepsinogen. The risk of gastric cancer development was higher in group C and in group D than in group A. However, the limitations are ABC screening for gastric cancer is not applicable in Japanese population with high prevalence of atrophic gastritis. And group A, HP eradicated patients and HP positive patients can be included. Therefore, the strength of recommendation is weakly recommended and level of evidence is C. Next, we need to detect early gastric cancer during endoscopic examination. The use of mucolytic and deforming agents is strongly recommended because improved visibility of the mucosa leads to the detection of early gastric cancer. The available mucolytic agents are pronase and n acetylcysteine Several RCTs have shown improved visibility of the mucosa after mucolytic agent administration. The use of mucolytic agent and deforming agent, uh, dimethicone is used for deforming. Dimethicone administration reduced the amount of the form in the stomach, the examination time, and improves endoscopist satisfaction. No study has clearly shown that mycolytic or deforming agent directly facilitates the detection of early gastric cancer. However, the use of mycolytic and deforming agent is strongly recommended in Japan because it is speculated that improved visibility of the mucosa leads to the detection of early gastric cancer. So, we strongly recommend it this statement, and however, the evidence level is very weak. Next one is, the inside of the stomach should be systematically observed to detect early gastric cancer. No study has examined the method of endoscopic observation of the stomach and detection of early gastric cancer. However, it is necessary to conduct a thorough and systematic observation of the inside of the stomach to prevent overlooking of gastric cancer. I myself 
advocates a systematic screening protocol for the stomach that is SSS. This slide shows systematic screening protocol for the stomach called SSS. So, the strength of recommendation is strongly recommended. However, the level of evidence is very weak. The next one is when we detect a lesion, we need to make a differential diagnosis of non-cancer and cancer, that is qualitative diagnosis. For these purposes, image enhancement endoscopy is useful for the qualitative diagnosis of Arigas cancer, thus its use is recommended. When the region is detected, a qualitative diagnosis must be made to distinguish between cancer and non-cancer. Image enhanced endoscopy enables the recognition of findings that are difficult to observe under white light endoscopy. A meta-analysis that compared white light endoscopy and magnifying narrowband imaging endoscopy regarding the ability of qualitative diagnosis showed the usefulness of magnifying narrowband imaging endoscopy. The Japan Society of Gastroenterology, JGES, and Japan Gas Cancer Association jointly advocate the magnifying endoscopy simple diagnostic algorithm for gas cancer, so-called MESDA-G, based on the VS vessel plus surface classification system. VS classification system for the analysis of magnifying endoscopic findings was developed by myself. This slide shows VS classification. We just classified microvascular pattern as regular, irregular, or absent. Similarly, for microsurface pattern, we just classify regular, irregular, absent. It's quite simple. Two criteria were set for making a diagnosis of high grade dysplasia or early gas cancer. One, an irregular microvascular pattern with a demarcation line, and or two, an irregular microsurface pattern with a demarcation line. It is also very simple. So using this diagnostic system, we have proposed method G. I would like to introduce how to use it. This slide shows conventional endoscopic findings with white red imaging. A slightly reddened depressed region is noted at the gas encounter. When we magnified it, we can't identify any distinct demarcation line. So demarcation line is absent. We can make a diagnosis of non-cancer. So this slide shows a slightly depressed red region. When we magnified it, it shows clear demarcation line between the region and the background mucosa. So in such cases, we need to look at inside the demarcation line. When we look at inside the demarcation line carefully, VS classification shows regular microvascular pattern plus regular microsurface pattern, that is, neither irregular microvascular pattern nor irregular microsurface pattern is present. So therefore, this is diagnosed as non-cancer. This slide shows a slightly depressed region at the incisura. When we magnified it, there is a clear, distinct demarcation line between the region and the background mucosa. So we need to investigate the inside of the demarcation line. So the microvascular pattern itself shows quite an irregular shape and arrangement. And microsurface pattern also shows quite irregular. So we can make a diagnosis. This is cancer. The guideline development panel concluded that the strongest strength of the recommendation for image enhanced endoscopy should be two, that is, proposed. 
because this technique is feasible in limited facility despite strong evidence supporting its usefulness for the qualitative diagnosis of algal cancer. So this is proposed, but evidence is very strong. Next, we need to diagnose to choose a therapeutic strategy for gas cancer after making a confirmed diagnosis of early gas cancer. So, we updated absolute indication for endoscopic resection. So, according to this indication, to determine whether endoscopic treatment is indicated for a particular region, it is necessary to diagnose histologic type, size, depth of invasion, presence of or absence of ulcer. In addition, for curative resection, it is necessary to determine the exact horizontal extent of invasion. First, histological type. Diagnosis of histological type of cancer should be performed comprehensively by endoscopic diagnosis and histopathological diagnosis using biopsy specimens. Among macroscopic type lesions, elevated lesions are frequently differentiated type with a low frequency of undifferentiated cancer. However, as for superficial flat, superficial depressed and exacerbated lesions, evidence of a super sufficiently high level has not been achieved for the endoscopic diagnosis of the histological type. Therefore, when diagnosing the histological type of a cancerous region, except for elevated type, it is necessary to make the diagnosis based on the comprehensive judgment of the result of endoscopic and histopathological diagnosis using biopsy specimens. So we weakly recommended it, and the reverence, level of evidence is very weak. Depth of invasion. In principle, conventional white light endoscopy should be used for determining the depth of invasion of early gas cancer. If this is difficult, endoscopic EUS may be a useful adjunctive diagnostic tool. Conventional white light endoscopy is the most common endoscopic examination for determining the depth of invasion. Non-extension sign is a simple and useful marker for diagnosing submucosal cancer by chrome endoscopy. There is no strong evidence that EUS is superior to conventional white light endoscopy. This slide shows morphological change in areas of intramucosal cancer and submucosal invasive area with extension of the gastric wall. With with endoscopic insufflation of the large amount of air, the non cancerous mucosa and area of intramucosal cancer become flattened and extended. In contrast, the submucosal deep invasive area can be seen as a massive elevation. With elevation of the surrounding mucosa, due to localized thickening and hardening associated with submucosal invasion by cancer cells. This is called non-extension sign. This slide shows intramucosal cancer with ulcer scar. When you don't insufflate a lot of air, you, you can't make judgment of non-extension sign. However, if we insufflate a lot of air, to make strong extension of the mucosa, gastric wall, so it is very well extended and show no massive elevation. This is non-extension sign, negative. So it is diagnosed as intramucosal cancer, and we performed ESD. However, if the cancer invaded the deeper part of the mucosa, if we insufflate the gastric wall strongly with a lot of air, so the mass, the region elevates, massively elevates. This is 
non-extension sign positive. So the diagnosis performance quite excellent. Therefore, we strongly recommend. Oh, sorry, we weakly recommended uh, these procedures. And the level of evidence is still weak. The last, the, the exact horizontal extent of invasion should be determined. Image enhanced endoscopy is useful for diagnosing the extent of invasion. So we've got two nice RCTs. I'm going to introduce one of the RCTs. So delineation of the extent of aricus cancer by magnifying narrowband imaging and chrome endoscopy. This is multicenter RCT. So the, the outcome was MNBI does not offer superior delineation of aricus cancer margin compared with chrome endoscopy. That is, the two methods appear to be clinically equivalent. That means both methods are useful. However, in the case of totally flat type, magnifying endoscopy is useful. I'd like to show a good example. So this is the to be type. So there is something different on the mucosa. But however, when we look at this region very, very carefully, we can't identify any distinct margin of the cancer. Even after dye was sprayed, we can't identify any exact margin of the cancer. When we applied magnifying narrowband imaging, when we magnified here, we can identify clear demarcation line between cancerous and non-cancer mucosa. So we confirmed this is a cancerous margin. When we magnify this part, we can clearly identify distinct demarcation line between cancerous and non cancerous mucosa. So using this technique, I put markings all the way around the cancerous margin. Okay. So this is surprising. This is very, very big region. So we resected this arc and we confirmed the mar markings were really put exactly just outside the cancerous mucosa. Anyway, we strongly recommended image enhanced endoscopy for diagnosing the extent of invasion. The last, uh, before the last, risk stratification after endoscopic examination. Risk stratification of gastric cancer may be implemented based on the scopic finding of H. pylori negative status and gastric mucosal atrophy. Thus, risk stratification using these two items is proposed. It is speculated that the use of finding H. pylori uninfected status and endoscopically observed gastric mucosal atrophy Kimura Takemoto classification makes it possible to stratify the risk of gastric cancer into low or high after endoscopic examination. So this is a very famous sign called regular arrangement of correcting venue, RAC, in the gastric corpus. This is a sign for negative H. pylori infection. So this is famous Kimura Takemoto classification. So we recommend weekly our level of evidence is C. So time is running out. I will make it hurry. So after the endoscopic examination, surveillance endoscopic examination is recommended for patients with risk factors. The data obtained from Japanese cohort study and cross-sectional study indicates the incidence of gastric cancer among H. pylori and infected persons were extremely low even in Japan. So we need to follow up the patient quite intensively. In summary, so I propose I explained the clinical practice guideline consists of the following section to provide the current guidelines according to the order of the clinical practice. So this is algorithm. Thank you for your kind attention. That's it.